Welcome to our lecture today on agenda setting theory. Um, and this is a theory developed by McCombs and Shaw. Uh, this is a, a media theory. And one reason that people really like this media theory is that um, what this theory says is it tells us that the media doesn't tell us what to think, but what to think about. And often in communication media studies, especially in theories that come from really more of that critical tradition, there's this kind of impulse for people to talk about the media as if it tells us what we ought to think, right? Who, like, um, if the media says to do this, then we do this. Go back to some of that ideology stuff that, uh, that was present in that chapter in semiotics about, right, like, so the media embedding messages, right, or cultural studies in the same kind of way. Embedding messages that get us to act in certain ways that preserve the power of the status quo. Agenda setting theory says something very different. It says that the media does set the agenda um, for what it is that we think, but it doesn't necessarily tell us what to think. It tells us which things are important, right, it sets the agenda in that way, but it doesn't tell us what to think about those particular kind of things. So this theory argues that the media has the ability to transfer the importance of items on news stories to the public agenda. Now, when I do this and uh, teach this in a, um, a live classroom setting, what I usually do is I ask the class, what are the important issues that we're facing um, right today, right, or, or the issues that are important in our country? And then, you know, we get a nice long list, and then we go to, um, right, several different news organizations, CNN, New York Times, Fox News, MSNBC, and we rank to see if the stories correlate with what the class has picked as the most important. And not surprisingly, usually the stories do coordinate pretty closely to what the class lists as actual issues that are the most important. Now, the original experiment started um, back in um, uh, um, around the time of the, of the um, Nixon impeachment or so. Um, and McCombs and Shaw started to test this idea of the agenda, of media setting agenda. Um, and they use this example of the Nixon um, uh, impeachment as one where journalists, right, there's this, this back page story that wasn't getting any traction, it didn't go anywhere, no one really cared. And two journalists really pushed this to the forefront to the point where it became a national media um, circus to the point where a president had to set, step down. Now, McCombs and Shaw are theorists tested the agenda-setting ability of the media uh, by running an experiment, which once again gives us a, a, a cue to the fact that this is an objective theory. Now, what they did is they started by measuring the media agenda. How do you tell what's important to the media? And what they did is they looked at the position and length of news stories as the primary criteria. Um, so, right, we know that something's important, for example, if it's on the front page, right? That's a position kind of issue. Or if, um, if you're watching, like, the television news, right, we, they tend to block segments into A block, C block, C block, or A block, B block, C block, and the A block is the most important, right? By the time you get to C block, it's usually human interest stories, right, like local, um, I don't know, festivals going on, that kind of thing, where the, the quote-unquote hard-hitting news happens up front, which tells us that it's more important. So what they did is they ranked these into five major issues, right? Um, and uh, those issues are listed there. And what they did is then they then went out and they asked people which were the most important issues in the country. And guess what? The stories that the media gave the most position and length to, right? Because also, um, like, length correlates to importance as well. So something that gets four or five minutes in a newscast is way more important, obviously, than something that gets a minute and a half. Or something that gets a full page in a newspaper is more important. Um, what they did is they found that the agenda actually matched those uh, the agenda that the um, that the public had, but what they found is that's a correlation, right? It's not a causation. Some people came back and said, "Well, you know what might be happening here is." Um, the media might just be reporting on the things that are already important to people. Uh, and remember, in an objective theory, what's important is a causation. We want to establish cause and effect between two things. Um, McCombs and Shaw re-ran the experiment, and what they did is they checked for a time lag, right? They checked to see um, if the stories were important um, before or after they showed up in the media, and they found that indeed, right, People didn't think issues were of importance until after they'd been in the media cycle for a day or two. After that, they were able to establish kind of causation, and agenda-setting theory has gone on to be one of the most influential theorists, uh, theories in the, um, in the media realm of communication studies. What, um, 
what ended up happening is that uh, one of the theorists, McCombs, I think it was, ended up tr um, changing this idea a little bit um, and saying that later on, several years later, he revised the theory to say, the media does tell us what to think, but not in the traditional kind of way, not in this ideological kind of way of like the media planting issues of like power, right, preserving status quo, etc., but through the idea of framing. And if we think of what a frame is, like on a picture, right, what it does is it helps us pull out certain strands, certain ideas, I issues within a picture, right? So if you're a curator in a museum, it's really important what frames you choose to go on what pictures, because it draws out certain features of different kind of pictures. Now, this is kind of the same way that the media affects the way we think through framing, arg argued McCombs. Um, when he argued that, um, right, like, so if we look at something like the war in Afghanistan, right, there are how many thousands of different stories that could be told about that particular about that particular war, right? Uh, I mean, everything that, that's possible, right? Approach from the from um, the villagers, approach from the um, Afghanistan government, the, um, what the relationship is between Pakistan and Afghanistan, what the U.S. monetary investment is, U.S. soldiers lost, etc. But the media only has so much space to tell us what to think. Um, frame uh, McComb said that. Uh, argued in this revision that through this framing, right, that's framing, that's choosing what it is that we're going to accent about a particular story. Um, he also included a behavioral effect that said the media actually influences the way that people behave. Um, and so they ran some experiments that, that demonstrated that we're like, after a news story of a plane crash, plane tickets plummeted, for example, right? People bought less plane tickets, which that's a behavioral effect. So McCombs revised the theory a bit to say the media does tell us what to think, but in a less kind of drastic way than maybe cultural studies or semiotics would. Now, this is interesting. This is a theory that's 50 years old or so. Um, and so questions some people are asking is whether or not agenda setting theory is still relevant, right? Um, and a lot of that has to do with things like where do we get our, in, our news from nowadays? We don't get it from newspaper or TV. Most of our news comes from the internet. Some of us get it on our cell phones, for example, anymore. And these same type of issues aren't really present. We can go find whatever news we want now. Um, and we don't need, right, we're not spoon-fed, we're not told that we have to fit into this kind of cookie-cutter model of these are the important stories. We can choose what the important stories are. And some of the issues like position and length don't really work anymore. There's not a, um, a finite kind of uh, space within a newspaper the way that there used to be. Um, right, a newspaper, uh, like if you go on CNN.com, there can be hundreds of stories, right? And stories don't really, um, like usually one or two stories are the headline, but the rest are just all kind of the same. Same with like news segments on the on internet, uh, right? You don't have to you don't have to stick to a half hour format anymore. Um, and so the question is, right? Who are kind of the gatekeepers, or the word that they use to say who sets the agenda? Who are the gatekeepers now, right? Um, who sets the agenda for the public in this kind of advent of new media and the way we get news nowadays? Um, so this is an objective theory, right? And you can know that because we tried to establish a cause and effect relationship through an experiment. So let's run it through. Does it give us a good explanation of the data? Well, once again, right, it was at one point. The experimental data certainly held up. Whether or not it still does, that's a question. Does it help us predict future events? Very high on that. If the media says this is important, right, if the media sets the agenda, people will, other people will. The public will say that it's important as well. Relative simplicity, I think it's very high on that. It's very easy to understand and, and, and um, chew on. A hypothesis that can be tested, a very clear hypothesis that can be tested and was tested, right? And that goes back to that correlation causation. A hypothesis, a cause-effect statement that can be measured and tested. And practical utility. I think it does have a high degree of practical utility. It should help us in our everyday lives understand where and why we think the things that are important are important to us.